Welcome to Learners Planet, my dear children. Children, today is session two about the green plants. Children, in the previous session, we studied about types of leaves, parts of a leaf, and functions of a leaf. Now, we will study further more about leaves. So, children, how do leaves make food? Yes. As we studied in the previous session that chlorophyll is the substance which is present in the leaves and it helps a plant to make food. So children, chlorophyll in the leaves helps a plant to make food. So you can see here, this is a picture of a leaf and there are many small substances present in the leaf, right? Yes. So they are called as chlorophyll and you can see the picture of the chlorophyll, right? There are many, many small structures or many small substances which help a plant to make food. So children, there are other things also which are very important for the plant to make their own food. So children, to make food, a leaf also needs water, sunlight and carbon dioxide. So children, this picture shows that a leaf also needs sunlight, carbon dioxide and water to make its own food. So children, now we will study about the process of obtaining these raw materials, right? So how do we obtain these raw materials? What kind of raw materials? Like water, sunlight, carbon dioxide? Yes. First of all, water is absorbed by the roots of a plant and then it is carried by the stem to the leaves. So children, Always remember that water is absorbed by the roots first and then it is carried to stem by the stem to the leaves. After that sunlight is absorbed by the chlorophyll when it falls on the leaves and then carbon dioxide is taken in through the tiny holes on its leaf called as stomata. So children, these three of them plays very important role in the plants to make or to prepare its food. So water, sunlight and carbon dioxide and chlorophyll are very important for a leaf to make its own food. So children, have you got it? Are you clear with this process? Okay. So what happens after this process takes place? Yes. After the food is prepared, the oxygen gas is given out through these tiny holes known as stomata. So you can see the picture of a stomata. It is present on the leaves, right? So after the food is prepared, the oxygen gas is given out through these tiny holes known as stomata. So children, we can say that the process by which leaves make their own food is called photosynthesis. Why is it called as photosynthesis? Yes, photo means light and synthesis means to put together. So, because of this light and other substances like water, carbon dioxide and sunlight all are put together and they make the food. Right? So, it is called as photosynthesis. So children, read with me the process by which leaves make their own food is called photosynthesis. So children, we can say 
that the food prepared by the process of photosynthesis is called sugar so always remember because of the process of photosynthesis the food is prepared by the leaves and this food is called as sugar for children now what do you think happens to this food what happens to this sugar yes the stem and the branches of the plant take this prepared food that is sugar from the leaves to all the other parts of the plant right so now you came to know that what happens to the food what happens to the sugar yes the stem and branches of the plant take this sugar or you can say that they take this prepared food from the leaves to all the other parts of a plant okay and this way all the parts of the plant get food so children we can say that the plant uses some of this food for its daily activities and it stores the extra food as starch in the roots stems leaves fruits or sometimes even flowers of the plant so children always remember that that plant uses this food for its daily activities and it stores the extra food as starch in the roots stems leaves fruits or sometimes even flowers of the plant so children i hope you are clear with this now we will see the interdependence of plants and animals so children why are plants and animals are interdependent on each other let's see children animals and plants are dependent on each other in several ways like first of all we will see that green plants are the main producers of food as you can see that green plants prepare their own food and leaf is the food factory of a plant so children green plants prepare their own food and that is why they are called as the main producers of food because they produce the food right after this what happens yes animals depend upon these plants for their food right thus a chain exists in nature for obtaining food which we call as food chain so children did you see yes animals and plants are dependent on each other right because green plants are main producers and animals depend upon these plants for their food so a chain exists in nature by these plants and animals for obtaining food which we call as food chain so children besides plants give or give out oxygen gas right which is needed by the animals to breathe right so children always remember that plants also give out oxygen gas which is needed by the animals to breathe right so we can say that plants and animals are dependent on each other yes they are dependent on each other as animals get food from the plants and they also get oxygen from the plants but then what is helpful for plants yes animals in return give out carbon dioxide gas which is needed by the plants for photosynthesis photosynthesis means yes 
green plants prepare their food with the help of sunlight water and carbon dioxide right so from where does this carbon dioxide comes yes from the animals animals take in oxygen gas from the plants and in return they give out carbon dioxide to the plants so in this way we can say that plants and animals are dependent upon each other so children this interdependence of plants and animals in a food chain helps to maintain a balance between the number of plants and animals right what is it called as interdependence this interdependence of plants and animals in the food chain helps to maintain a balance between the number of plants and animals so this food chain is very important for our environment for example if there are too many cows there will be less of grass for them to eat so what will happen many cows will starve and they will die right so we will have to maintain this balance by the process called as food chain right so children this will result in less of carbon dioxide for the plants if they will eat if the animals will eat more and more grass or more of the animals right like wild animals if they will eat more animals then what will happen there will be imbalance in the nature right and if all the animals all the domestic animals and the herbivores will eat plants then what will happen yes this will result in the less of carbon dioxide for the plants right there will be also less of oxygen for the animals and carbon dioxide will be less for the plants why because animals will die right so what will happen there will be a sudden increase or decrease in the number of either plants or animals and this balance in nature will be disturbed right so because of this there should be balance in the nature so interdependence of plants and animals in a food chain is very important right so i hope that you are clear with this interdependence of plants and animals and you enjoyed this session about the green plants so children always keep learning and keep smiling we will meet in the next session with the new lesson thank you children